Welcome back to another video and one of the reasons why I wanted to go through this video is that I got a message and it prompted this video. So I want to go through this message really quick and I'm going to show you guys what basically happened. So this person says, do you have advice for a 14 year old to become successful and a millionaire in life? I already found my passion. I want to get be able to get a Rolls Royce, Ghost, Don and a Ferrari Pista 488. I can't read. Okay, so I said, you guys can see it. I said, that is awesome. But firstly, I'd say that people who want to spend a million dollars always accomplish that end. It sounds like you've got conflicting goals right now. I'd recommend you pick up a book called The Millionaire Next Door and Rich Dad Poor Dad in that order. I said, I appreciate it. My dream is to become a professional soccer player and win the World Cup in 2027, win and win the Olympics. 2028 women's so this kind of reminds me a lot of me when i was 14 i wanted to do sports that's kind of a a cultural thing not to say that nobody's going to make it in sports but not a lot of people are going to make it in sports so this is what prompted this series lifestyles of the rich and fameless so if we want to have a lot of riches what we're pitched on tv is that you have to be a ball player you have to be a talking head on tv you have to be an actor or you know you have to be a rapper things of that nature so i wanted to go through this just so that i could answer the question more fully and recommend this book by the way i will be doing a giveaway for this book um, if you comment down below and have a friend respond with your name comment your friend's name have your friend respond with their name uh, i will enter you into the drawing so next video we'll do the drawing for the giveaway of this book and uh, i want to give away two copies of this book so we will see how that goes and um yeah we had a little poll that was on instagram hold on i'll pull it up real quick i said trying to come up with a title which one sounds better lifestyles of the rich and boring or lifestyles of the rich and not famous i actually went with a message that somebody sent me lifestyles of the rich and fameless so this is that video and we're going to get into those lifestyles and what actual millionaires walking among us look like so we're going to be able to spot a millionaire after this video and see what they look like see what they think like what do they dress like what do they drive things like that if you read the book but this information comes from about the first 20 25 pages of the book i hope i've interested some of you guys in reading it but anyways let's get into the video so fun facts from the book this is this book was written in 1996 so a lot of the numbers uh, aren't necessarily accurate but the trends are what's important because the trends are what tell you how people are behaving so we got first one 80 percent of millionaires did not inherit their wealth and they accumulated it in one generation so what does that tell us that tells us something that's very counter to what we tend to think uh, what's pushed down our throat i guess by the media which is that most millionaires either inherited their wealth you know you think of that rich kid that has the trust fund uh, most millionaires actually did not inherit their wealth so most people accumulated it in one generation and we'll get into who those types of people are later in the video one half of u.s wealth is held by 3.5 percent of households those are the millionaire households so 3.5 out of 100 are in the millionaire category and only one out of 4,000 people become wealthy through inheritances. It's actually pretty rare. So that's talking about people who just inherited their wealth. So it's very rare. And the funny thing is that, you know, that's what the media shows you. They show you the rare fringe cases because that's what's interesting. They show you the Kardashians. They show you the athletes. They show you the right lifestyles of the rich and famous. They don't show you the lifestyles of the rich and boring. So anyways, yeah, I'm probably going to parlay this into a series where I interview people who are rich and not famous. I know a couple that I'd like to do already but anyways we'll get into that later that'll be a later series uh, so anyways this is this is episode one potentially 25 million households have an income in excess of 50,000 and 7 million have an income in excess of 100,000 so in other words there is this, these are 1996 numbers but in other words this, the point of this was that people do have money to invest but a lot of people aren't choosing to invest it they're not choosing to be a part of that 3.5 percent who own half of the wealth because how money works is, you know, when it's like getting dealt cards into a game, right? If you get dealt cards and into the game and then you just fold your cards every time, you're never going to get to play the game, right? The work is what gives you an opportunity to have wealth. The wealth is actually the businesses, the assets, the real estate. And if you don't actually go buy those assets, then you will never have the wealth, right? So that's what we got to do. We got to go buy those assets or else we're never going to be in that 3.5% of households. Okay. 
moving down, we got average household could only survive for a month or two. We saw that during the COVID-19 pandemic without an income. 50% of Americans would live in poverty without Social Security. So that's kind of a sad statistic. This one is really struck me when I read the book. And uh, if you look at even the biggest number that I've got down here, it's a 25%, fewer than 25% own stocks and mutual funds. So if you think about that, you know, that means that 75% of people don't even own stocks and mutual funds. One of the greatest paths to wealth, 75% of people aren't even looking at it, right? Only 22% have had a CD, right? Certificate of deposit account. Basically, if you look at all these numbers, you see that people aren't even investing. They don't have IRA accounts. 23% have IRA accounts, right? This is not millionaires. This is the, the population in general. So what this tells me is that, you know, unless 75% of Americans don't have enough money to invest, which could be true because if you're spending all your money, you don't have any money to invest. That's, that's what it tells me. So you're already working with only 25% of the population is even going for those 3.5%, right? So when people tell me that being wealthy is not behavioral, to some extent it really is because look, look at these numbers. Not very many people are investing. So next slide here. Okay, fun facts from the book. 65% own equity in their home. So in other words, a lot of Americans, like the American dream is own the home. It's not to have any wealth, not to have any businesses, not to have any rental properties. But like when we go back here, only 8.4% own rental properties. <clears throat> and the other one is 85% or more own motor vehicles, one or more motor vehicles. So that's what we're prioritizing. We want to own a home and we want to own motor vehicles. So most of our wealth is in motor vehicles. I believe in this book, they also said that if you took out the equity in people's homes, the median net worth for Americans would be $4,000, right? So that means that people just aren't investing. That's what that means. Okay, Millionaire Next Door, The Surprising Secrets of Americans Wealthy. So yeah, basically this is just describing what the book is and um, what they found was that these millionaires aren't what we think of like the nice suit or the nice car. These millionaires have a million dollars because they didn't spend their money, right? If you spend a million dollars, then you're not a millionaire. If you save a million dollars, invest a million dollars, then you are a millionaire. So I want to tell you guys a little story about this deck of millionaire named Bud. So basically, they had this guy. They invited him in. He owns some commercial real estate property in New York. So they brought him in, and uh, they sit him down with all this fine wine and cheese. Uh, they they said, would you like you know this wine or that wine? Is there was two wines that I can't pronounce either one of them, and he's just shifting in his chair. Uh, uncomfortably and they ask him you know why haven't you touched the wine and cheese and he says you know they basically ask him what would you like to drink and he says i drink scotch and i drink two types of beer budweiser and free right so he's basically saying i'm a simple guy i like assets and i like keeping my money in my pocket that's how you keep your that's how you end up wealthy is keeping your money in your pocket right not by displaying status symbol so most of them are pretty practical, pragmatic, and they prioritize having money over spending money and showing that they have money. So next slide. Okay. Behavior. So this one is interesting. Uh, they had these two categories that they put people into that were the millionaires. They put them or non-millionaires, high earners. They put them into UAW or PAW. So under accumulator of wealth, prodigious accumulator of wealth. So what you can do, and I found that this doesn't make too much sense until about like age 35, 40, they said that you take your age divided by 10 and then you multiply it by your pre-tax earnings. So for example, for me, I'm 28 divided by 10, 2.8 times pre-tax earnings. We could just say it's about 100. So that'd be about 280,000 that I'm supposed to be worth, right? But the thing is, if you make me 35, then I'm supposed to be worth $350,000. So I think it's a little bit more accurate for people that are nearing retirement. I think that's what it's intended for. But uh, anyways, next slide. Okay, so this is the main things that they found in the highest concentration of millionaires. So number one, they live well below their means. Number two, they allocate their time and energy and money, time, energy, and money efficiently in ways that are conducive to building wealth. Number three, they believe that financial independence is more important than displaying high social status. Number four, their parents did not provide economic outpatient care, which economic outpatient care means basically <laughs> you move out of the house and then they continue to take care of you. So that's what that means. Number five, their adult children are financially self-sufficient. Number six, they are proficient in targeting market opportunities, or in other words, they make their own investment decisions and they um, 
they're good at finding investment opportunities. Number seven, they chose the right occupation. So, right, if you look at all these things, these are all choices. So anyways, into the next slide here. Okay, my rich but not famous parents. Um, I talked about them a lot on this video, or uh, on this channel, rather. But um, yeah, let's go through my parents. My parents, age 57, which we'll get into that that's actually the average age of a millionaire. Annual household income, I think it's about 250. Estimating there, it could be a little bit more or less. Depends on what their rental income looks like. Expected net worth is $1.4 million. And their actual net worth is more than twice that last time I checked. So that makes them in the PAW category, right? So anyways, all right, this is slide 11 of 19. And I hope you guys are enjoying this video as much as I enjoyed making this and reading the book, rereading the book, Millionaire Next Door. This stuff was eye-opening and it's funny because a lot of what I saw in the book, it was almost like they were writing a story about my parents. So I really enjoyed that book. You guys should check it out and make sure you guys enter the uh, giveaway if you guys want that a copy of that book or honestly if you've read it before tell me that you've read it before and uh, I would love to give you another book off of my reading list because I just like sharing that knowledge and I like building that community join the Facebook if you haven't already and that's enough self promo let's get back into the video so statistically who becomes a millionaire lived in the same town all their adult life business owner married once and remains married lives next to neighbors with a fraction of their wealth. In the book, they said that the average millionaire uh, or like the prodigious accumulator of wealth lives next to people who they have up to 6.5 times their wealth. So in other words, you know, the person next to them is spending all their money on their mortgage. As we saw earlier, most of people's wealth or 65% of people have uh, equity in their home, but only 25% of people own stocks and bonds or stocks rather. So and at number five, compulsive saver and investor. Uh, I'm sure anybody who knows me would know that that is true of me. So I'm sure I'll get there one day eventually. And uh, number six, they made all, uh, all of their own money. 80% of millionaires are first generation rich. So I think the value of sharing this is that, you know, if monkey see monkey do, right? You see this, if you do this, you'll probably end up with the same results that somebody else ended up with. All right, next slide, slide 12 of 19. Okay, so these are these are kind of interesting. You know, millionaires don't like to flex as much. Mil majority of millionaires never spent over five hundred dollars on a watch. So the majority of millionaires do not drive this year's model of car. So a lot of what we see on TV is, you know, the rich person with the with the nice suit buying the new car every single year. But really, when you think about how much depreciation that would be, anybody who's smart with their money would never do that unless they have just money to just throw away, right? And they're really into cars, but most people don't actually do that, that have a bunch of money because like we said before, people who have a lot of money, they have it because they didn't spend it. So anyway, next slide, 13 and 19, prototypical millionaire, how to spot a millionaire. So these are going to be six slides and then we'll close out the video about what a millionaire actually looks like. So what we see on TV versus what they found in this survey. So 57 year old, typically male, married with three children, 70% of millionaires own over 80% of their household's income, one fifth are retired. Okay, two out of three are self-employed and uh, self-employed individuals make up less than 20% of the workers in America, but account for two thirds of the millionaires. So basically what that tells me is that if you want to create your own income, you kind of have to create your own ecosystem. You have to create your own business. You have to be an entrepreneur. And as it says right there, three fifths of self-employed millionaires consider themselves entrepreneurs. So if you want to create your own income, you want to go beyond what somebody is willing to pay you, right? You have to create your own ecosystem. You have to tell people what you are worth rather than being told what you are worth. So moving on there. So one of the things they said was a lot of the businesses that they are in could be described as dull normal. So one thing that I really was eye opening for me when I was reading this book is that as a kid, I always drove by all these businesses, you know, I drove by all these little small shops, these auto shops, you know, these, these just random like repair places, these, these contractors, things like that. And I never thought like, who owns this? Like if you own three or four of those, then, uh, you know, you could make a pretty good amount of money. And I met this guy in uh, Costco's parking lot. He had a $10 million net worth and he just looks like a normal guy. The guy was like, I probably, I'm trying to have him on the show at some point, but he just looked like a normal blue collar guy. Like he, he had like a Seahawks jersey on 
and he came and he fixed my crack in my windshield. I cracked my windshield and uh, we get to talking. I told him I had a channel about personal finance and he tells me about how he like has multiple homes and he has a bunch of people doing this in different Costco parking lots and he's got his big business empire and you know he just kind of started it from the ground up had nothing to do with his education and he's got vineyards and he's just got a lot of stuff going on and he's like yeah I just I just love working and that's really the prototypical millionaire somebody who loves working loves saving loves owning land love loves building his business or her business and that's the type of person that we don't see on TV only see him in this video uh, okay so half of their wives do not work outside of the house. Median household income, these are 1996 statistics, $131,000. Average, which is skewed up by the really high earners, is $247,000. Mm -hmm. That, okay. Part two and part three are the same thing. Okay, part four. Part four, their average realized income is less than 7% of their wealth. So in other words, they're not selling off their wealth and they live on a very low percentage of their wealth. So. Basically, what that tells me is that if they were to stop working today, they could live for a very long time just off interest, right? Because they prioritized uh, financial independence over just having a lot of things. That's what that tells me. Average net worth $3.7 million, median net worth $1.6 million. 97% are homeowners. So, you know, that should tell you something, despite what Grant Cardone would tell you. Grant Cardone will tell you to invest in his fund and uh, not own where you live. The statistics will tell you the exact opposite. Okay, homes are valued at average of three hundred twenty thousand. I would think that you could probably, you know, maybe double that. So maybe I would say probably like seven hundred thousand or so in today's dollars. So what I saw a lot in this book is that this thing right here. Most of them responded that they never felt at a disadvantage because they never received an inheritance. So they they basically did not feel like a victim of circumstance. They went and they made it happen. They live well below their means, they wear inexpensive suits and clothes, and they drive American-made cars because they're the cheapest. Okay, last two slides. Only 18% disagreed with the statement, charity begins at home, without a uh, second quotation mark there. Their wives are meticulous planners and budgeters and more conservative with money than they are. So I've said this a lot on the channel that if you and your spouse or your intended wife, whatever, are not on the same page as far as wanting to build wealth and have financial freedom and security, that is a big red flag. So we already said this one, 6.5 times the wealth of their non-millionaire neighbors, and uh, non-millionaire neighbors outnumber them three to one. So basically they live next to people who have a lot less wealth. Last slide here. So as we can see here, most of them are educated, have a college degree, only one fifth of them don't. So in other words, you don't need to have it, but most of them do. And most of them do not have professional degrees, right? Only 18% have master's degrees. A lot of them are not, they're not from private schools, but they are sending their kids to private schools and they're spending heavily on their offspring's education. All right, this is the second part six. Made a little, little mistake there. But um, anyways, prototypical millionaire part six, two thirds of them work between 45 and 55 hours per week. So if you want to be a millionaire, you got to work hard. You got to want it. They're investing 20% of their income. 79% of them compared to the less than 25% in the general population have a brokerage account or they own stocks. In other words, the majority of them make their own investment decisions. We said that already on average, 21% is held in a private business that's held by the family and they hold 20% of their wealth in publicly traded stocks and mutual funds, and they rarely sell their investments. So all these little trading academies, yeah, forget about all that. That's not what the millionaires are actually doing. They actually had a, a uh, study that they cited that people who trade more are less likely to be a millionaire. So anyways, hopefully you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Uh, I will be expanding this series at some point to include actual people, profiling actual people. I think I might start with my parents. I'm thinking about you know inviting different people that I know onto the program and just ask them how they got to where they got. Lifestyles of the rich and not famous. Lifestyles of the rich and boring. Hopefully you guys liked the video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys in the next video.